a virtually untraceable poet in Shakespeare's time, Bartholomew Griffin, in 1596 wrote a series of 62 highly artistic sonnets, entitled Fidessa, More Chaste Than Kind. From the epistle, to the gentlemen of the Inns of Court, it can be inferred that the author Griffin himself had a kind of professional relationship to the London Courts of Inns, but no trace of him has been found in the registers. Fidesa, Latin, fides, clearly is a metaphor, which stands for a female virtue or goddess of trust and loyalty. The poems are by no means amatory sonnets, but allegorically mark an inner dispute between the author's autobiographic situation and his inner values or virtues, an actual religious divinity of loyalty and trust. One wonders, why Shakespeare experts, or Shakespeare Academe, never developed any plausible thesis, or undertook any research efforts, to answer significant questions, such as, who may have been? Or was there even any poet B. Griffin, at all? How do we know that the first name of Griffin was Bartholomew? Why after 400 years, not a single piece of information of a poet, Griffin, has ever been discovered? How could it happen, that we find Sonnet 3 of Griffin's Fidessa, also as Poem 11 in Shakespeare's The Passionate Pilgrim, similar to other sonnets, that relate to other contemporary poets such as Willoughby, Delony, Barnfield, Hayward or Marlowe, who, Griffin or Shakespeare, has stolen or plagiarized from whom? What was the motive of the author in The Passionate Pilgrim? To significantly change the meaning of four lines in the sonnet, why obvious biographical aspects of Marlowe's destiny, throughout the sonnets of Fidessa, have been deliberately ignored, or overlooked? Could it really happen, that in 1596 an unknown sonnetier Griffin came to such an early literary mastership with his sole sonnet cycle? The third sonnet in Fidessa, beginning Venus and young Adonis sitting by her, was modified as Sonnet 11, in the booklet. The Passionate Pilgrim a collection of twenty poems by W. Shakespeare, first published in 1599 by William Jaggard. To this day, no logical or plausible explanation or theory exists as to why Sonnet 3 from Griffin's Fidessa in 1596 was used again but in a stunningly modified way, by Shakespeare in 1599 and Poem 11 of the Poem Cycle, The Passionate Pilgrim. Consider that. Five of the twenty poems of The Passionate Pilgrim were later published again. As Shakespeare's Sonnet 138, Poem 1. As Shakespeare's Sonnet 144. Poem 2. As Shakespeare's Sonnets in Love's Labours Lost. Poems 3, 5 and 16. And that five poems had been already published, but under other poet names. As Richard Barnfield's Poems in Diverse Humours, in 1598, Poem 8 and 20. As in Bartholomew Griffin's Fidessa, in 1596, Poem 11. As Thomas Delony's The Garland of Goodwill, Poem 12. As Christopher Marlowe's Live With Me and Be My Love, Poem 19. In the other ten poems of The Passionate Pilgrim, no known author has been disclosed. In the third edition of The Passionate Pilgrim, in 1612, two additional love epistles, already published in 1609 by Thomas Hayward, were included. None of the writers, Griffin, Barnfield, Delony, Marlowe, Hayward, was credited in the three printed editions of Shakespeare's The Passionate Pilgrim. Unfortunately the cause of this very obscure and dubious literary situation up to now, has not been satisfactorily clarified. The Stratford myth, or taboo, 
has fatally prohibited the testing of probably the single most logic, most compelling theory, that is. All poems of the passionate pilgrim must have been the literary and intellectual property of a single person. The poems were composed and were modified by a singular unique, necessarily concealed, poet genius, Christopher Marlowe, at different times, under different pseudonyms or pen names. This can impressively be shown, if you take the contexts of the sonnets of Fidesa seriously, that is biographically. Let's demonstrate this on three sonnets, 13, 27 and 53, completely sufficient to recognize in B. Griffin none other than Christopher Marlowe. The sonnets prove the assumption, that behind the bizarre multiple authorship of the passionate pilgrim hides the indispensable multi-pseudonymity of Marlowe, alias Shakespeare alias Barnfield alias Haywood and so on. Compare me to the child, that plays with fire. Or to the fly, that dies in the flame. Or to the foolish boy, that did aspire. To touch the glory of high heaven's frame. Compare me to Leander, struggling in the waves. Not able to attain his safety's shore. Or to the sick, that do expect their graves. Or to the captive, crying ever more. Compare me to the weeping wounded heart. Moaning with tears the period of his life. Or to the boar, that will not feel his smart. When he is striken with the butcher's knife, no man to these can fitly me compare, these live to die, I die, to live in care. Poor worm! Poor silly worm! Alas, poor beast! Fear, makes you hide, your head within the ground. Because of creeping things you are the least. Yet every foot gives you your mortal wound. But I, your fellow worm, am in worse state. For you, your son enjoyed, but I want mine. I live in irksome night, O oh cruel fate. My sun will never rise, nor ever shine. Thus, blind of light, my eyes must guide my feet. And baleful darkness makes me still afraid. Men, mock me, when I stumble in the street. And wonder, how my young sight so decayed. Yet do I joy in this, even when I fall. That I shall see again, and then see all. I was a king of sweet content at least. But now, from out my kingdom banished. I was chief guest at fair dame pleasure's feast. But now, I am for want of succor famished. I was a saint, and heaven was my rest. But now, cast down into the lowest hell. Vile caitiffs may not live amongst the blessed. Nor blessed men amongst cursed caitiffs dwell. Thus, am I made an exile of a king. Thus, choice of meats to want of food is changed. Thus, heavens lost us hellish torments bring. Self crosses make me from myself estranged. Yet, am I still the same, but made another. Then, not the same, alas I am no other.